Eric, you are in the, the mic is yours. Thank you for coming. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, I certainly appreciate it. Um, you know, Culver City is very near and dear to me. I, I've, I've resided there a couple of times in my life and spent a whole lot of time in and around that city. So um, I, I truly appreciate this opportunity. So uh, my name is Eric Strong, and I'm actually a candidate for LA County Sheriff. Uh, I am running to effect some serious change, some relevant change. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I have 29 years in law enforcement, uh, which spans three different agencies. And that's very important to note because uh, maybe during our conversation, we might get to the point about the culture and the mindset of the sheriff's department um, and how that culture is ingrained in people. But when you come from the outside, you don't really get that. Uh, but I've worked some of the most violent um, crime ridden areas uh, actually in the nation as well as some, are, some of the most affluent. And, and you know, what I learned is that you know, we can treat people no matter where they are with respect, dignity, and compassion, uh, no matter what community, no matter what socioeconomic uh, status, uh, and no matter what, what, what color or religion um, or orientation. Uh, near and dear to me uh, are alternatives are incarceration, uh, care before incarceration, you know, growing up in LA County, I've been targeted. I've been I've been roughed up by police. I have family members that have been incarcerated and suffered from addiction. Uh, I have family members that have you know been unhoused, and, and I know that we can do things better and we can do things different. Um, personally, myself, I, I've even had family members that have been killed by the police. So I, I say that because I really bring a 360 degree perspective to what community needs and what law enforcement needs and also has to offer. Uh, I'm one of the only candidates that have, I am the only candidate, excuse me, that has actually investigated deputy gangs. I acknowledge they exist. I don't think we need any more panels. I don't think we need any more reports to tell us what we already know. We just need to take steps and action uh, to, to, to deal with it and, and to get rid of them. Uh, I'm a firm believer in um, empathetic and compassionate uh, respect-based, dignity-based policing. And that's not only just for our uh, contacts that we have in the street, but as well for those that are in our jail systems. And so, you know, we have the largest jail system in the country. So with, with some of those beliefs, I'll just tell you, within my 29 years, I've worked just about every facet of, of this profession. Um, very, very extensive knowledge in patrol, uh, jails, courts, um, I've been on tactical teams. I've been a field training officer. I've been an investigator. Um, the majority of my uh, supervisory time and management time, I spent serving in internal affairs. Uh, I was the unit commander of our advocacy bureau, which is our employment law bureau. And, and that's very important to note because it gave me an opportunity to really have an inside view of almost every case that comes through our department, every type. So we have our policy of equality violations which are sexual harassment, hostile workplace type of uh, misconduct. We have our typical misconduct. We have force, we have shootings, uh, civil lawsuits and employee lawsuits. So I was a unit commander of that and really did a lot to revamp and, and create a little bit more efficiency and effectiveness within that process. And I was also the unit commander of our audit and accountability bureau, uh, which conducts audits, you know, uh, according to GAGA standards, uh, generally accepted government auditing standards, uh, their performance reviews, and they really, really give us an in-depth view of the strengths and weaknesses of our department. And, and those are really, really key because I think it gives me that, that internal oversight aspect. I've also built good relationships with external oversight with our OIG and our uh, community advisory committee, um, civilian oversight committee. I'm sorry, we actually have community advisory committees at all as well. Um, I'm married, I have three children. Uh, I, I consider myself to be a, a regular guy that you know coached all my kids during little league and youth sports. And I'm that guy that you'll see in the grocery store next to you or you know in the booth next to you at the restaurant. And so with that, I would really like to hear from you and, and answer whatever questions and discuss whatever issues uh, that are important to you because that's where I learn and that's where I think I can best serve you is hearing from you. Great, so if anyone has a question, please raise your Zoom hand. And if things drag, I can ask some of the questions that people asked uh, 
Cecil Rambo when he was here as well, just to, you know, have some direct comparisons. Uh, Kareem, then Cynthia, then Donna. Um, well, uh, okay. Um, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for taking the time. I would love to know how you will resolve an act upon uh, the plague of gangs within police. Thank you. I believe we, there is 19 gangs in LA County alone. Yeah. And so I'd like to know like how we're going to deal with that. No gangs. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. And you know what, that's something that everybody's talking about. And here's the reality of it. These gangs have been a lot around for decades. They've been allowed to fester for decades under, under numerous uh, regimes of leadership. Uh, and they've, nobody's ever really truly acknowledged it and, and spoke against it. So I hear what everybody is saying you know, in the news. I really do. I hear what everybody's saying in their statements. But these are some of the same people that had seats at the table that were in very high positions that could have done something uh, you know, years ago. And I can tell you that internally, the message on the inside of the department has not been, and within my 21 years on this department, has never been, do not participate. It's not acceptable. Um, you will be held accountable. You will be disciplined. You know, it's, it's, it's just not been the message. So number one is, like I said, while working internal affairs, I am one. I am the only candidate that actually investigated deputy gangs. Um, my investigation resulted in multiple terminations. Uh, I know that they exist. Uh, again, like I said, we don't need any more panels to tell us what we already know. The real thing is to number one, acknowledge it, right? Um, take a hard stand against it. Um, basically, discipline and and be willing to take on the unions in terms of the the, the public trust that these gangs are violating. And then here's a real another component that uh, is a more of an immediate fix, and that is like any gang or group, their strength is in their numbers. You know, we have um, 24 patrol stations, and when you have 20 to 30 people at one station that belong to this gang or clique, they have a lot of influence over that station. Huh. But you take those 20 and you spread them out station to station to station, right? They're one person, one deputy at another station, and they have no influence. Their, their, their influence and their power is in their connectivity to be able to control um, things that go on on the station and to be able to work together and work against the community. Uh, again, that's a union issue. People do not want to go against the union. It happened once, many years ago. There was a chief who stood up, and he separated them, and he sent them all over the county. It was very effective. It worked. About 10 months later, he retired. And a guy that you may have heard of by the name of Paul Tanaka took his place and actually allowed them all to come right back in again. And that, and it's been going on ever since. Great, Cynthia? I think you're muted. Thank you. Um, this club endorsed George Kazgan for Los Angeles District Attorney, and I wonder if you support the reforms that he has implemented. Um, um, our current uh, uh, incumbent sheriff appears to be trying to recall him. You know, George. George is a, a another elected official, and he's somebody that uh, you know. When I get in office, if he's in office, he's somebody that I have to work with. Um, I, I don't, I'll tell you, one of the things that you'll hear from me a lot is balance. And so I do see both sides of the coin. Again, you know, my family, I've had family members that have been um, murdered as well as my fa my wife. Um, so do I want to see um, appropriate jail sentences? Yes. But I also have family members that have been incarcerated, you know, incarcerated for, you know, being addicted to, to cocaine. You know, so do I, do I agree with some of the enhancements and, and removing some of the enhancements? Absolutely. Yes, I do. Um, and just another thing, you know, it's not necessarily a family member, but um, a cousin of mine, uh, her high school boyfriend is actually her ex-husband now, was wrongfully incarcerated for 17 years and he was released uh, after the Innocent Project. So I see the need to really, really look into some of these lengthy sentences. Um, but again, I think what we really need to do is, is practice a little bit of balance and not just throw a blanket over the whole system. 
you know, it's, do we need people doing long sentences for, for property crimes? And, and, and do we need people, you know, getting out in five years for murder? I think we have to find a balance there. But, but can I just, so are you suggesting that maybe you think he's gone out of balance? Or you haven't decided? No, you know, I, you know, well, let me just say this. I will not support a recall. I will tell you that. Thank you. And, and my, and my, and, but I will also be honest with you and very candid and to tell you that um, it's the recall process that I do not support. It doesn't work. Um, it hasn't worked. If you look at, you know, history since 1913, there's been roughly 180 recalls in California, maybe 11 or 12 of them received enough signatures to move forward and maybe only six passed. I think we need to do something different in terms of the recall process. Um, but it, will I support a recall for George Gascon? No, but I do think that he does need to come to the table and have some conversation. Uh, I don't think being his adversary uh, is going to work well. Um, speaking out against them is going to work well. Uh, the people voted him in. And if the people want to, you know, uh, conduct this recall process, um, that, that's up to the, to the community and the voters. And I'm going to stay out of that. And, you know, I will work with him um, to resolve our crime issues and, and to, to, to talk about our prosecutor, prosecutorial issues as it relates to law enforcement. So I don't, I, I want to just clarify. I don't think he's out of balance. I think that um, I think that just more conversation needs to be had and have a better understanding. Uh, Donna, I think you're still muted. Let me see if I can unmute you. There. Oh, you're good. There goes. Um, thank you, Mr. Strong. I uh, appreciate your time. Um, I have long believed that all law enforcement um, is supposed to be <laughs> here to serve and protect. That phrase have, was ingrained in my head by my father. Um, as time has gone on, I have found that some departments, some individuals, some, you know, serve and protect, uh, I'll protect certain people, but not serve others, you know. Okay. I firmly believe that the public in whatever form should have some oversight over every single part of law enforcement. And yet I hear an awful lot of, even from our own council, uh, we brought this up a while ago and one of the council members said, well, that's our job. And meanwhile, all these other issues were going on. They're not doing anything about, and we're not getting current statistics and information that we can follow up on and say, well, excuse me, but why did this happen? Why did it happen that way? You know? And so I, I, I forgot what you said in the beginning, you, you mentioned oversight and I don't remember exactly what you said, but just let me add one other thing. Um, I have been in a profession for 50 years as an RN uh, exposed to a lot of audit and oversight, including the OIG, including more local things. And I firmly, firmly believe that's how people get better. When their mistakes are pointed out, not internally, not although sometimes internally, you learn something that you might need to change. So what's your position on that? I am so glad you brought that up uh, when it comes to oversight. You know, I, I have said, going back to the Office of Independent Review Days, OIR with Mike Chinaco, when people, you know, in this organization, and, and, and this is not that long ago, I mean, it's within the last, you know, 10 or 12 years, just fight against oversight. And, and nobody can actually, when I have these discussions, nobody can actually give me 
a real reasonable and logical reason why, other than the fact that we just don't want it. I have no problem with oversight. I think it is a good thing. I think it helps maintain accountability. I believe in being transparent. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I really would like to do, and, and let me just back up. I don't know if you're familiar with NACOL, the uh, National Association of Civilian Oversight. I'm a member of NACOL. I'm an associate oh member of that. Um, I have been to their conferences and been on the panels to speak. I think it's a wonderful organization. Uh, they're very hard on law enforcement. You know, it, it takes a little while to kind of crack through that, but um, I met wonderful people there. But one of the things that I want to do is I want to create, in a sense, oversight at each station. And, and this is why. We need civilian advisory committees or civilian oversight committees that will, will bring people to the table to be stakeholders in our complaint process, in our use of force process, the evaluations. And I, it, it's important to know that what community and what cities need is different all throughout the county. What San Dimas citizens are looking for being at the foothills of the mountains is far different than what Lamita. Uh, and these are the different stations. It's far different when what they're you know, community needs. What Compton needs is far different than what Santa Clarita or Malibu Lost Hills needs. And what Cerritos needs is different than Altadena. So what I want is I want to bring people to the table that are stakeholders and, and kind of fill that oversight gap between the huge countywide oversight that really doesn't get a chance to look at everything and bring it closer in to each station level, because they should be able to look at their deputies their sergeants, their lieutenants, the personnel that are serving that community and have some input in, in, in what's going on at that station. So um, don't tell anybody that, that's my secret, okay? <laughs> but no, I, I, uh, I, I am a fan of oversight. And I, again, I, I firmly believe that if you're doing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, you really don't care who's watching. Great. Let me uh, ask you one more just to close things out. Uh, tell us about some of your uh, endorsements. You know, I have been um, beating down the doors and, you know, I'm, I, obviously I'm in the endorsement process right now. Uh, a lot of uh, clubs and organizations and labor, they're in there, they're accepting their questionnaires and they are, um, you know, starting their process for their, for their interviews. Uh, I have really been focusing on community and people, I have endorsements from community engagers, uh, um, doctors, lawyers, professional educators, um, uh, interventionists, um, Urban Peace Institute. And I also have some endorsements from, you know, local city elected officials. So um, I, I'll be honest with you, I, this is my first time, you know, uh, being a candidate and, and, and it's a very eye-opening awakening um, experience for me to say the least. So, uh, I, I am learning what, what, what it looks like to be in this political world. And again, I'll just say this, it's very interesting, but I'm also learning that I need to be very careful with who I associate myself with. I mean, and we see it in the news all the time. Um, you know, sometimes these endorsements can backfire on you. So I'm being very cautious. I'm being very careful. And I'm really making sure that whoever I'm asking for endorsement, I kind of line up with their principles and, and vice versa. Um, I have a list of over, oh gosh, I don't know, 120, 130 endorsements. I'll be coming out with that uh, here and after the first of the year. Um, but again, I think it's, uh, for me, I feel really good that it comes from people that are on the ground, you know, working to make LA County better. Thanks. So, um... Thank you for spending some time with us tonight. Uh, I, I think we all appreciated the chance to get to know you a little bit. And uh, you're welcome to stick around for our business meeting, but I can't guarantee it'll be, you know, that ex as exciting as what you've seen so far. Um, so um, with that. Yeah. Um, and I just want to, oh, yeah, I'll just ahead. say thank you to everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, all yours, please. Oh, I just, I just want to say thank you, everybody. I, I really appreciate your time. And, and I really encourage you to, to really, you know, dig deep and, and, and look into all of the candidates that are here, that are running, um, do your research, do your background. I, I actually offer you my personnel record if you would like it. 
um, you know, whatever it is that you need um, to help you feel comfortable. And I, and I hope to get your endorsement. And um, I just want to say have a great night. And uh, I think it was um, Ronnie, my electricity went out too. Uh, not my electricity, but my family members electricity went out on Thanksgiving. And I just want to add this. The day before, they had just had an, a, a tankless water heater put in, mm. which you plug in. So we didn't even have hot water either. So I feel your, I feel your pain on that for Thanksgiving. But everybody have a, a wonderful evening. And thank you so much for your time. Great. Thank, thank you. you. So let me end the recording and call this thing to order.